Hello and welcome to the channel. So you're going camping or you're going to do something outdoors and you need a robust and dependable watch, which also can be read in any light conditions. And of course, it mustn't be expensive. Well, today we've got Timex Expedition for review. Let's have a look if this watch satisfies all of these criteria. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're already subscribed, thank you and very warm welcome back. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It does help us to bring you more reviews. In this video, we'll do our usual checks, dimensions and specifications. And of course, we'll go over the positives and negatives to ultimately help you to decide if you should spend your hard-earned cash on this watch or your money are better off spent somewhere else. So, while we're on the subject of money, I paid £27.99 on Amazon UK for this watch and this watch is available on Amazon.com as well for about 35 to 45 American dollars. I will leave links in the description so you can check it out. Just in case you are new to Timex, a brief history recap. It is an American manufacturing company and it has been going since 1854. Throughout its history, Timex had various commercial and creative partnerships ranging from USA military to produce parts for missile navigation systems to partnerships with Disney to produce one of character watches called Disney Classic Collection. So they know a thing or two about making watches and as a consequence developed a very strong following. Okay, so back to this watch. What to expect in the box? As you can see, the watch, the stand and the paperwork which is tucked inside of it, which I assume includes the manual and the warranty details. And that's about it. Let's take a closer look at dimensions now. In the tradition of the true military field watch, Timex kept the size down. Diameter is about 39 mm. The height of the watch is 9.8 mm, nice and thin. Lock width is 20 mm, so no issues with getting alternative straps option. Lock tip to lock tip is 45 mm. The weight of the watch is 32 grams on the supplied nylon strap. The nylon strap is done pretty well two layers and feels robust and practical, can be very easily washed or cleaned if need be. There is no tape on the strap and we have a signed metal buckle, simple and functional. The strap is long enough to cover 8.25 inch or 21 cm wrist and circumference. The watch is not large, again in line with the field military watch aesthetics. Here it is next to my Seiko G-Shock and my 40mm Pagani design. This watch will sit very well on pretty much any wrist size from 6 inch to over 8 inch. As you can see by the position of the buckle on my about 7 inch wrist, there is about 1 inch on the strap both ways, so it is quite versatile when it comes to the size. In the spirit of a proper field watch, we have 12 and 24 hour markers, clear minute track and nice and crisp date window at 3 o'clock. Date window color and font help the legibility, however, I think it could be a little bit larger. Hands are simple and clear, sort of cream color hour and minute hands and yellow second hand. There is a loom on all three hands. The loom is not too strong, but it doesn't really have to be. It is only needed to help eligibility when watch transitions from bright area into a darker area, otherwise Timex proprietary Indiglow will do a great job of lighting up the screen. Indiglow is a dial backlight feature on Timex watches, incorporating an electroluminescent panel as a backlight for even illumination of the watch dial. Timex introduced the Indiglow technology in 1992 in their Ironman watches and subsequently expanded its use to 70% of their watch line. In the Glow made headlines after the 1993 World Trade Center attack when an investment analyst from one of the firms in the building used the In the Glow light on his Timex Iron Man watch to lead a group of people down the 40 flights of dark, smoky stairs. Timex uses a flat acrylic crystal here, again, perfect for the field camping type watch. Acrylic is very hard to shatter and even if it scratches, a quick fix with polywatch can clear it out. Moving on to the case, the case made out of resin, kind of plastic polymer, very light and very robust. I like the crown guards, the earlier versions of this watch apparently didn't have crown guards, leaving the crown exposed. 
It is much better with them in place, making sure the crown is nicely protected. The back case is secured by four screws. Timex declares 50 meters water resistance and, according to Timex, this watch is suitable for short periods of recreational swimming, but not diving or snorkeling, which kind of makes sense. This watch is powered by quartz movement. The movement allows for a quick set date and hacking. Also, it is quite low power movement and it can last on one battery up to five years. Of course, if you don't overdo it with the Indiglow feature, then the battery will run out much faster. And now we come to the Mons and Nigel section and there are some, however, I'll keep the price point of this watch in perspective. A quick point that doesn't particularly fall into negative section is the size of the watch. At 39mm this watch might come across as a bit on the small side, however, as I mentioned earlier, it is very much in line with the military field watch statics. As an example, the US military standard issue marathon field watch is even smaller than this Timex at 34mm in diameter. And just before we get to the negatives, if you find this video helpful, give us a like by hitting that like button and, of course, don't forget to subscribe. So, here are the areas that, in my opinion, could have been done better. Well, the Indiglow feature is great, however, it doesn't light up the date window. Not a showstopper for me personally, however, definitely would be better if the date was lit up as well. Another point is the ticking sound of the quartz movement. In a normal day-to-day -day environment it is hardly audible, however, when I've got to the perfect quietness of my recording studio I could still hear the ticking even at arm's length. Any further though and it becomes almost unaudible. So for me, again, this wasn't an issue at all, however, something to keep in mind if you have very sensitive ears. And the last complaint that I have is absence of the low battery indicator. You don't want to be stuck in the woods with a death watch battery, right? Well, from what I read in the forums though, the battery can last 5 to 7 years, which is good. Also, apparently the in the glow either is not as bright when the battery is low, which kind of makes sense, or stops working altogether, which kind of is an indirect low battery indicator, which is better than nothing, but definitely not ideal. So please let us know if the battery was ever an issue with your Timex watch, if you have one. So, in my opinion, we have here a simple, robust watch, which does exactly what it says on the tin and can be a great companion in camping expedition, a perfect fit for the actual name of the watch. Please let us know what you think of this watch. Your comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.